everyone can hear me? All right, so we're gonna begin the meeting. Welcome to the St. George Theater. This is Staten Island, in case you just got dropped here somehow. Uh, I'm Bob Gilbert, Vice President for Dammit, and I'm going uh, to take the place of Emma Gaskinsala. She cannot be here with us tonight. Uh, so we're gonna begin the meeting. Uh, those of you who were on the fam previously, I want to thank Vincent Inocente, uh, Director of Marketing and Audience Services for the St. George Theater. He gave a fabulous tour and we really appreciate it. So I want to start off the program with uh, introducing our host, Doreen Krugno. She, her mother, her sister are the driving force in this theater. The reason why we can sit here today is because of her and her family's passion for the St. George Theater. I'm going to let her tell you the story and uh, please welcome Doreen Kuchner. Thank you. Thank you. Very impressive title. Doreen is the president and CEO and co-founder of the St. George Theater Restoration Incorporated. Please welcome her. Thank you for that lovely introduction. Thank you, Bob, and everyone for being here. I know many of you had uh, the good fortune of getting the full tour with Vincent and Asante, um, and you got to really learn about the history and how this place was developed and built and uh, where it is today. Um, I'm going to try to make it quick for you. Uh, the theater had a great economic life in the 70s, fell on hard times, was closed for nearly three decades. Uh, prior to that, opened up 1929, December 4th, uh, as a movie palace and boardroom home. So now here we are in 2003 and the developers uh, who owns the parking lot and the building in front of us, um, they wanted to tear down the theater and the community board wouldn't allow them to. So they decided, well, let's try to sell the theater. They couldn't find anyone to purchase it. They did come to us with the $5 million sticker price and we said, no, thank you. A few months later, they decided that they would donate it to a nonprofit organization. And that's when my mom, sister and I decided we should give it a chance. So we started the St. George Theater Restoration Inc. Prior to that, we came in with our architects and engineers and contractors and accountants and uh, lawyers. And every single one said, don't do it. Every single one because it didn't look like this. Who was finding comfort was the birds, the raccoons, and the fleas, okay? And uh, there was a little electrical working in some parts of the building. The plumbing was not working. There were no seats on the first floor. When you first walked in, all the glass partitions were cracked and broken. We had no marquee. I mean, the list goes on. In the restrooms, you couldn't walk in. The ceilings were down to the floor because the plumbing the pipes that bursted everywhere. There was a hole on the stage that a car could fall down. There were holes in the mezzanine seating area where you could see the rain coming down. You know, we wouldn't even show our husbands the theater at the time. We just told them about this great project because they would say, don't do it. We took the deaf ear. And uh, it was with my mom's life savings that we were able to start the renovations the first year. We couldn't get a bank to give us a loan. And at that time, my mom was a very prominent businesswoman in Staten Island and owned a few buildings, had no problems reaching out to any banker for, for money, but no one wanted this white elephant for the collateral. So she used her life savings, it was about a million dollars at that time to start with the restoration. Within a year, we developed a, a strong board of directors. Our elected officials right away believed in us three ladies that we could save this theater. And it didn't look like this, like I said, and through time and through years, we received support. Uh, over $15 million was invested already with capital funding from our elected officials. Uh, we raised a few million um, 
with individual donors to continue projects through foundations and the list goes on. Uh, we have about a hundred shows a year. Uh, we connect with all audiences. Our doors are open to everyone. We have spectacular outreach programs that we love boasting about educational programs and giving back to the community because that's what we're all about. Um, I thank you for being here. You are the connectors to the consumers for us. We need you. You have the fingers on the pulse here for us. So I thank you for what you do. We need you. We need you to bring New York, you know, folks back to New York City. I, I really love the campaign that NYC and company has right now for tourism. They recently did a commercial that's shown in all the 50 states. What we love is that they highlight the St. George Theater in it. Yeah, we're really excited about that. And we're getting friends saying, calling us from different states saying, Oh my goodness, I saw your commercial. I have a friend who lives in Las Vegas who called me and said, I love the commercial. So it's really nice knowing that NYC and company is doing their part to promote tourism for all of us and for all of you to get back to work too. So I thank you. I'm not going to keep you any longer, uh, but I really applaud you for what you do. And please come back, see your show, bring tourists to us. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to continue. Uh, there will be no president's report since Emma is not with us tonight, but an important report, just as important, our treasurer's report. So, Jeremy, give us the numbers. <laughs> All right, hello, everyone. Um, so we are now at the start of the new fiscal year. You know, our organics fiscal year runs from November 1st to October 31st. So as many of you probably already received the email, we are in renewal season. So the dues remain $125 for the year. Um, if you do not want to pay online, if you want to pay by check, you can mail that to the office. And just as a reminder, the new address for Gannick's office is Gannick, 115 Broadway, fifth floor, New York, New York, 10006. If you have a check or cash on you uh, that you want to pay me today, you could do so at the end of the meeting, uh, or if you want to kind of quietly give it to me uh, during the meeting, that will be fine. I will also be able to take in-person payments at the December meeting, as well as the January meeting. It is uh, generally policy that your membership will lapse if you are not paid up by the January meeting, which will be the first Wednesday of January. At that point, you will become lapsed. Um, by the End of our uh, fiscal year, at the end of October, um, our numbers were, were very good. Uh, I forget the exact numbers, but we were basically at about uh, 14,000 or so in change in the checking account and about 12,000 in change in the savings account. Uh, that was before we began the renewal. So Gannick's fiscal picture is pretty healthy. Uh, wanna thank every, every one of you on behalf of the board for the support you've shown to the organization throughout this crisis. Uh, and I hope that you will all renew uh, and join us for next year. We uh, hope to continue to do great things for the organization. Um, any questions about the treasurer's report? Can you just say the address again, please? Yes. So our current address is also on the website, but it is Gannick, and all checks should be made payable to Gannick. Uh, it is 115 Broadway, fifth floor, New York, New York, 10006. Yes, Michael. I should know this, and I don't, but maybe you do. Do we have any information on the liability insurance yet? No. So we have been uh, getting our liability insurance through the NFTGA. Um, I have been in contact with their current treasurer, um, Nick Spedovic. Uh, we do not have information on what the liability insurance is going to be for 2022. Uh, I hope to have, certainly hope to have that information by the end of the year. As soon as we have the liability insurance info, uh, from the NFTJ, we will send out an e-blast to all members with that information and how much it will be. Any other questions? All right. Thank you all. Thank you, Joe. Okay. So uh, the main reason why we're here tonight is to hear the candidate speeches from those people who have graciously offered to give their time and energy to the new executive board that will begin in January. So um, I also wanna thank the new people that we have not heard from or seen on the board before. 
and they will be our first speakers and members at large. They are Anne McDermott, Beth Goff, and Kit Garrett. So I think if I start alphabetically, we'll start with Kit Garrett. Thank you, Bob. I typed this out to keep me on track and timing wise. So I am Kit Garrett, founder and CEO of New York Sites and Insights. I have agreed to run for the member at large position. Understanding the position requires the ability to make contributions across various subcommittees as needed. My background includes creating and running a high level destination management company for over 20 years. We offered exclusive experiences to corporate and leisure guests who were both locals and visitors, allowing them to see New York City in a new way. I joined Gannick in the early 1990s as a tour guide and rejoined the organization after I sold my company, Discover New York and Beyond, in 2016. I kept my lectures about New York City and my tours separate from the sale of the company, and that is how I spend my professional time today. My membership in Gannick has allowed me to meet some fabulous new guides. One of my favorite aspects of this organization is learning from each other by attending fam trips. Having relied upon the expertise of the Gannick community to share their knowledge with our clients, I would be happy to help Gannick members to create resumes and connections that use their extraordinary backgrounds and skills with organizations who need them. My contributions in the certification committee have been extremely rewarding, both professionally and personally. As volunteers, this committee offers the opportunity for a new or seasoned guide to create a new tour, which they could sell at the end of the course if they wished. And many graduates have done so. This real hands-on learning covered five areas, building a tour, storytelling, presentation skills, logistics and customer service. Watching candidates apply this te these techniques has been a rewarding experience for both the candidates and the committee as we share our knowledge to help each other create unique and polished final projects. Each committee member went through the process to earn their certification. So we know what it's like to participate in this amazing opportunity. Each of the member at large candidates will make great board members. If my background and skills would be helpful to the organization, I would be happy to serve. A bit more about me and my background may be helpful for you to determine if I am the best fit for this position. During my career at Discover New York, I was Condé Nast top destination specialist for New York City for eight years, featured on the Travel Channel, Delta Shuttle Magazine, Town and Country Travel, and Elite Magazine. For years, I was the guest lecturer on the QE2 and the residents at sea, in addition to other cruise ships and corporations for their summer interns and relocated families. While living in the US, Australia, Hong Kong, and Mexico, I taught cooking and design food products for Fortune 500 companies. My educational background includes advanced certificates from the Culinary Institute of America, the higher certificate from the London Wine and Spirit Trust, and a Bachelor of Science in Hotel Management and Tourism, New York University, graduating summa cum laude, and earned my destination designation as a Destination Management Certified Professional. I'm currently a board member of Save Chelsea, a member of the following organizations, the Greenwich Village Society of Historic Preservation, the Historic District Council, the Beaux-Arts Alliance, the Art Deco Society, the Society of General Mechanics and Tradesmen, the American Institute of Architects, the Friends of the Upper East Side, Historic District Council, Council on Toll Buildings and Urban Habitat, the Architectural League of New York, the Institute of Classical Art and Architecture, Friends of the Upper West Side, Friends of Terracotta, and Grand Central Atier. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. We're, we're going to say questions 
for each category after they're finished. So when the remaining two members at large are done, if anyone has questions for that category, we'll do it. But before I call up our next speaker, I just wanted to tell you how the next elections are gonna work because I failed to mention that. One week from today, all full members of GANIC will receive an e-blast with a link to electronically elect your next board members. There will be no paper ballot yeah. moving forward with this. The election committee will oversee the ballots and the link will be active up until the beginning of the meeting on December 8th at the United Palace, which is Broadway between West 100th 75th and West 176th Street. The election committee is made up of myself, Deborah Blau, and Susan Birnbaum. Susan Birnbaum isn't with us tonight because her daughter is about to give birth at, at any moment. So we wish her all the best of luck. Uh, I also just must add, I want to thank Claude Toback, our resident Staten Islander. If it was not for Claude, we would not have been connected with the St. George Theater. So Claude, I know you're listening from at home. Thank you. We love being here. So next is going to be uh, Beth Scott. And all the, all the speeches will be handed in and they will be posted under documents on the GANIC website. So if anyone who isn't here tonight or is watching tonight, you could go back and read and any of the statements. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay, so my statement, I actually wrote it and I left it on the computer. <laughs> so I rewrote mine on the Staten Island Ferry just now. Um, and also before I start, I wanted to, to mention if you all are familiar with the uh, the show Treasures of New York. They did a really good program on this building here. So definitely look it up because it's got amazing information about Doreen and her mother and her sister and, and the way the theater looked, which was tragic. So it's really good. So anyway, I have to put my glasses on. Seven. Okay. So I am glad to be standing in front of you as a nominee for member at large for Gannick. And for many years, I worked in human resources and benefits. And actually, um, I worked at Sun Microsystems <laughs> a little bit with Ann McDermott for a little while, although we might not have remembered that. Um, so I also volunteered for, <sighs> volunteered for the Central Park Conservancy and was employed for a time by this conservancy as well. Uh, when it was time for me to switch careers, my application uh, to graduate school was rejected. So I thought maybe I should try to earn my tour guide license instead. And fortunately, I succeeded in doing that because it was definitely the better choice than going to grad school. So because I spent so much time affiliated with the Central Park Conservancy, I consider myself a Central Park specialist. I, I even wrote a tour about Calvert Fox's gifted assistant, Jacob Ray Mould, who's my favorite guy surrounding the, uh, concerned with the park. Uh, bird watching is always a highlight uh, in my tours as well. And uh, I, I've been able to share this fun aspect of the park with our colleagues uh, on a couple of fam tours last year already. Uh, and the fam tours are, as Kit had said, is one of the greatest things about Gannick in itself. Um, and I was also able to take get Kit and her grandkids on a bird watching tour, which was a highlight of my year this year. So bird watching is a huge thing for me as well. So during the pandemic, in, in the depths of the pandemic, uh, I presented my scandalous tales of the Upper West Side as a webinar several times uh, because it started off as a tour. <laughs> And uh, and it became a webinar uh, just because uh, of the pandemic. So imagine that. And, and as well, I also got into doing uh, virtual tours because of the pandemic. So strangely enough, uh, that worked out for me and only for me. <laughs> and maybe for my audience as well. The pandemic, of course, was horrible. Um, so in, in any case, more is on tap. Uh, I've got a lot of things percolating in my brain, but as tour guides, I think we all have a lot of things percolating in our brains. So 
Uh, I'm glad to be involved with such a an erudite group of people. And with that, I said, I'm, I'm glad to be associated with an organization that does so much for its members and by extension, New York City. Uh, I mean, seriously, what would the city do without us guys to take care of its tourists? Um, so in the two years that I've been a member of Gannick, which is much less than my esteemed colleague, Kit, who's been doing this forever, <laughs> what a hard act to follow. Um, I've met so many nice people who sh are so generous in sharing their expertise with their fellow members. Um, and during the lockdown, the board did a remarkable job in keeping us all engaged and uh, updated and as engaged as possible. So now I'd like to return the favor. And if I'm elected to the board as a member at large, uh, I will, to the best of my ability, uh, use my creativity and sense of fun and um, enjoyment of this entire group uh, to support our organization in the coming years. So thank you very much for your consideration. Thank you, Ben. So our next candidate for member of large is Anne McDermott. Thanks everybody. So I just want to put a plug in for this theater because um, I saw Mary Wilson and Martha Reeves here, as well as Brian Wilson and Brian Wilson from the Beach Boys. It was a phenomenal Christmas show a couple of years ago. And then tomorrow, actually, I have tickets to see Four Tops and the Temptations. And they still have tickets available uh, upstairs. So if you're in the mood, my brother lives in Staten Island. So I spend a lot of time in Staten Island. <laughs> I take the ferry three times a week. And I actually wrote a little blog, you know, I'm sort of new to this whole tour guide thing. I spent my whole life in IT. Um, and in one of my many changing of jobs, I said, well, you know, maybe people have always told me, you know, you're good at this. You should like get licensed. So I got licensed. And then I came to organic meeting and said, Brooklyn Historical Society, and then the pandemic hit. So, so in any case, so let, just, let me give you a little bit of background about me and what might qualify me to help out here in, in whatever way. So I'm born and raised in Brooklyn. I was born at Park Slope, then moved to Bay Ridge. I attended Catholic school there. I started working straight out of high school. I don't have a college degree uh, in the Garmin Center. And then at Time War, at, at Ward Communications, so I could meet Peter Gabriel. That was my goal, just to meet Peter Gabriel which I eventually did. That's sort of a long story. If you come on one of my tours, I can tell you that story. Um, and then I moved into temping. And from temping, which I loved that job, that was like the best job I ever had. Um, I, found, I found my way into information technology where I spent the last 35 years. I live on the Upper East, Upper East Side with my 17 year old rescue dog and two parakeets. Uh, <laughs> My IT, in my IT career, I supported customers from the biggest banks, Citibank, Credit Suisse, HSBC, and Chase, just a few, to mammoth media companies like Verizon, NBC, Cablevision, HBO, Major League Baseball, the NFL, and Time War. Um, to a small high school in Long Island that needed virtual desktops. So I've you know, sort of run the gamut on that one. I've taught evening classes at NYU uh, in HTML and Unix, if you know what that is, which is, kind of gives me an entree into standing in front of people and talking. I'm very active in several political and civic uh, organizations. I was on the board of my high school in Brooklyn, St. Joseph's in downtown Brooklyn, which was on Bridge and Willoughby Street. Um, we worked for five years to keep the school open. We were not successful, but um, it was a very good experience. I'm very passionate about helping young people understand how important technology is and teaching technology. Uh, when I worked at IBM, I was, uh, IBM has a school in Bepper Stuyvesant called P-Tech, which is a phenomenal thing that helps uh, educate kids in how to use technology and how to get jobs uh, in technology. And I was involved in that. That was actually why I stayed at IBM, because I love doing that so much. Um, so to support the Small Business Job Survival Act bill in the city council, a friend of mine and I launched a Facebook group called Take Back NYC where I met Robert Brenner, if he's here or he's online. <laughs> um, although we haven't succeeded in passing that bill, it's been a good lesson in how City Hall runs. We now fight to preserve some of the city's most treasured sites like the East River Park and my current hot button historic McKinmead and White Hotel, Pennsylvania. I organized a little thing where we stood outside and sang Pennsylvania 65,000. 
uh, was a band a couple months ago. We have not moved the heart of the king, however, and it still looks like that thing is gonna come down. <laughs> um, in my 30s, I led many singles activities, organizing dances, frisbee tournaments, and summer houses. And for years, I've shown friends around New York. Okay, I told you that already. Um, all right, so during the Zoom uh, Gannett meetings last year, Nina mentioned, Nina Mende mentioned, if you have an idea, so I was trying to figure out, so how do I get, how do I do this? How do I get into this guide thing? So Nina Mende mentioned, if you have an idea for a tour, you know, put it as a fan and we'll do it. And so I, I said, well, what do I know? What is something I know, know well? And I, I know rock and roll, right? I really, it was one of my things. So I put together a tour in the East Village of the long gone but not forgotten 1970s music venues where we go to like CBGBs and the bottom line. And, and thanks to Pat Mancusa, I now have actually chatted with the gentleman who used to run the bottom line. She told me the story. I don't think, can I tell you your story, Pat? Pat used to be the babysitter for the guy who ran the bottom line. And she sat next to Mick Jagger when Squeeze was playing. So um, any case, thank you, Pat. I really appreciate that. And now my next uh, next fam I'm putting together next week is the Media Moguls of Midtown, which is gonna be about uh, people like David Sarnoff and Bill Paley and the founders of CBS, NBC, Warner Communications, big companies. And uh, I will also tell you about the history of the internet because that's something I've lived in my career and um, it's really important to where things are today. So there you go. I can see that Gannick has great committed leaders who, who've done an amazing job guide, guiding this organization and would welcome the opportunity to lend my expertise and knowledge to that effort. That's it, thanks. Thank you, William. So does anyone have any questions for the member at large position? Anyone? Okay, and I just want to remind all of our candidates that within the week, you should send your statement to election at gannick.org, and then it will be posted under documents on the website. So the next uh, two candidates who will be giving you their speeches are for our secretaries. So I'm gonna call Patrick Casey. Hang on just one second. I'm switching out of my timekeeper mode. Thank you for everyone keeping your five minutes. Okay, there's my speech. Hi. Um, I think the first most important thing I want to say is thank you all for the trust that you placed in me two years ago. I hope I've met your expectations. You have given me the opportunity to serve with an absolutely incredible group of creative, driven, focused guides. This executive board consisting of Emma, Michael, Bob, John, Deborah, Kevin, Jonathan, Christina are absolutely amazing. And it's been my honor and privilege to work with them over the past two years and most certainly during COVID-19. It is an experience I'm never gonna forget. And I'm very appreciative of this chance. Now, obviously, none of us knew that a global pandemic was going to upend every aspect of our daily and professional lives. But this group consistently created and facilitated programs and activities to serve and engage our membership. It was an incredible process to even watch. What do our members need? How do we get that need fulfilled? How do we reach out? We can't do anything in person. We'll just go virtual. We'll figure it out. It was an amazing turn on a dime, learn on your feet. And we did it. And again, I am grateful. One of the most fascinating and exciting developments to come out of the COVID experience is GANIC's evolution. While we have been advocates, advocates for the guiding community in New York City from the start and a social hub for our membership, the pandemic accelerated our progress to becoming a more active and aggressive trade association. That really is what this GANIC is. We are a 50C, a 501C6. We are a trade association. The past two years inspired networking and collaboration with associations nationwide and internationally. And because of this group of over 
overachievers I was affiliated with, GANIC became the go-to for many associations as they look for ways to serve their membership. While many associations lost members, we stayed stable. That is remarkable and supports a priority for GANIC. We must aggressively grow our, manage, our membership roles to give our voice greater volume. For two years, I've acted as recording secretary, keeping track of our board and membership meetings, keeping this whirlwind of activity on track. With John Semlak and a committee, uh, and, a, and a committee, we created GANIC's own health and safety protocols when no one was addressed how to give tours safely. With certification, we restructured our curriculum to serve our community virtually, and when it was appropriate to go back into the field with safety. Through it all with the Government Relations Committee, we have kept intro 289A in the forefront of our city council. And quite frankly, given their reactions to our work, we've annoyed the hell out of them, <laughs> which is a really good thing. We've gotten their attention. We're still dealing with the politics. We're still dealing with political indolence, but we're not stopping. We are going to continue doing this. And I'm committed to keeping all these endeavors going forward. Much has been done, and of course, what defines what must, what has been done will define what we do going forward. Now, I can't do all of that myself. I wouldn't want to. This board cannot do it on, them, on their own. As I did two years ago, know that membership involvement is the key to our success. And I will continue to reach out to each and every one of you, the members of GANIC, to become involved, to join committees, and through your power of example, bring more guides into the GANIC fold. You, in the streets, are our best advocates. And we hear that constantly from our new member interviews. How did you hear about GANIC? I met another GANIC guide. I thought about it and then I went to a meeting. I was invited. They want to become members. So I'm gonna keep after you to keep doing that. The larger we become, the more powerful our voice will become. And the more we're going to achieve, Quite frankly, the more we're going to lead. That's what GANIC demonstrated for the past 18 months, and we're going to continue doing it. I ask again for your trust to keep GANIC in the forefront of our industry, and thank you all. Thank you, Patrick. So John Semlick is now going to get the mic. Thank you. And thanks, so I was the I've been incredibly impressed by all of our candidates so far, but I just want to mention the incredible list of organizations that Kit Garrett is bringing into the fold. Um, and I, I'm just going to say, I, I, you know, I, I'm a member of a few things, but I'm probably a member of the Society of American Baseball Research. Top that. Now I'm going to keep my statement short uh, in the interest of time and to give more time to other candidates. I'm just going to give a few appropriate remarks. I didn't imagine doing this with a mic in hand. Two score and seven years ago, <laughs> our pre predecessors brought forth the Multilingual Guides Association. It was later renamed the Guides Association of New York City under the belief that all guides were licensed equally. <laughs> We have engaged in a great battle against the pandemic, testing whether our association or indeed our profession can endure. Today, we are met on a great battlefield of that war, the battlefield of New York City. We remember those of our own who lost, who were lost during this pandemic. But we cannot simply look back at the past. Our profession must recover and is recovering just as New York City is recovering. I'm proud that GANIC has been at the forefront. And I wanna thank our current board members who I, uh, with whom I have worked who, and who have worked hard to make GANIC a leader in the recovery. Emma Guest Gonzalez, Michael Borgenthal, Bob Gelber, Jeremy Wilcox, Patrick Casey, who is, I particularly thank for working with me and enduring me at times. Um, <clears throat> Kevin Lawrence, Deborah Blau, Jonathan Tour, 
and Christina Lawrence, who of course uh, did leave the board some, a few months ago. I especially thank Bob and Deborah who are departing from the board, and I thank them for their service. And I also really want to thank Beth Goff and McDermott, Kate Garrett, for making the commitment to serving the board. And I look forward to working with them should I be so elected. I thank all the members of GANIC and all the members of committees and other members who have worked to make GANIC such an extraordinary organization, both now and in the past. And so I hope I will live up to this and I hope that we shall continue to make GANIC an association of the guides, for the guides, and by the guides. I humbly accept the nomination for secretary of the Guides Association of New York City. Thank you, John. So next step back is the only person who could possibly want to be treasurer and do it for another two years. So please welcome Jeremy Wilkins. Thank you all. Thank you all for trusting me with the money. Um, so I also want to join in my colleagues and in, in really thanking the membership uh, in particular for again supporting us uh, particularly over the last two years during this term. Uh, I know Michael has brought up many times to, particularly to the newer members of the board that oh when you guys got elected two years ago you didn't expect to be doing this in the middle of a pandemic and uh, obviously the related downturn for the industry but to say that my fellow board members rose to the challenge would be an understatement. Um, I did serve on the uh, previous board as well as a member at large, which was a great honor. Um, and I'm very proud of the work that that board did, but this board you know, really was fantastic um, in terms of seeing people who really, partially because we all had a little bit more free time than we had hoped for, but really rose to the challenge in doing great work. Um, I do wanna thank the membership for not only in the previous board, trusting me to be a member at large, but then trusting me to be treasurer again. Um, very appreciative of that. And I'm very happy to uh, have this opportunity to be nominated to serve again for another two years as the treasurer. Uh, hopefully, you know, we will continue to keep the financial ship afloat of GANIC. I'm very proud that, uh, as many noted, that we've done very well, better than most similar and comparable associations, particularly in the United States, um, during this in terms of keeping membership and keeping our revenues um, and expenditures low and our revenues high. Uh, is what you want to uh, to do. Uh, but yeah, just thank you guys so much for all of your support and words of encouragement. Um, and the next board is really looking forward to continuing to serve you, uh, the membership, because that is what we are here for. Anyone have any questions? Yeah, I was just going to make sure we get a Q&A from the secretaries at the... Oh, I didn't mention that. Yeah, does, sure we'll does anyone have a question? for either of our two secretaries. No, all right, that's it. Two experts, there's nothing to ask. <laughs> all right, so as we move along, uh, the next two candidates are our candidates vice president. Um, and I'm gonna call Kevin Lawrence to come up. First, I just want to say to John Semlat, that was one of the best impersonations of Melania Trump I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. So in the interest of time, I have edited my statement without introducing my professional background, which you can find in the published version. Uh, and so tonight I'll be reading this more concise statement in the hopes of winning your vote to be one of, next, of the next Ghanic vice presidents. <clears throat> Firstly, I also want to thank the GANIC members for previously electing me as a member at large. It has been a true honor to be a part of the outgoing executive board. The dedication and resourcefulness and even good humor my fellow board and committee members exhibited throughout the unrelenting storm that COVID was provided a lifetime for maintaining some semblance of sanity during a seemingly never ending insane period. I am truly humbled and grateful to have served alongside this incredible group of people. But with that said, it needs to be pointed out that one rare thing that COVID provided us all with is a lot of free time in which to discuss and strategize various efforts to position tour guides to best recover once we were all out of isolation. 
And now that we are in fact in the full swing of recovery, GANIC members should recognize that board and committee members will have not have the same luxury of free time to maintain the extraordinary efforts we undertook during COVID. Personally, I've spent the past six months busting my hump trying to string together enough tour guiding, teaching, and translation gigs to make ends meet in this very expensive city. And in addition, I, like everyone else, am getting older and I have decidedly entered a very Taoist period of my life. And so I'm cultivating an increased appreciation of Wu Wei which is unfortunately usually translated as non-action, which makes it sound like the platform for a slacker. But I think the phrase should more accurately be translated as effortlessness, i.e. don't exert more effort than is needed to achieve a goal that may itself be superfluous in the first place. I'm probably not alone among you in feeling that out of necessity, GANIC is a secondary or even tertiary concern to me as an unpaid volunteer member. If elected as one of your vice presidents, I will bring the following skeptical questions to the various issues and proposals that routinely come before the board. One, is the matter at hand consistent with GANIC's stated mission in our organization's constitution and promote the interests of our primary constituent GANIC members? Two, is the scope and ambition of the matter at hand commensurate with the size of GANIC as a volunteer member organization? And finally, three, however, appealing a particular matter at hand may be for our members, to our members. Is there a reasonable expectation that in pursuing a given course of action, there will be a reliable commitment of broad active efforts from our fellow volunteer members to best assure success? Having now more intimately been involved in developing certain GANIC events or courses of action, I don't think that there is necessarily a full appreciation of all the small and large efforts that go into, say, securing a venue like St. George Theater, while also simultaneously ensuring that we live stream this meeting for an at-home audience, all for an organization that is only barely more than 300 people. Canic should take pride in its many accomplishments, but the level of work and commitment volunteers like Jeremy or Mike or Bob or Emma uh, devote day after day, week after week, month after month, in order to develop, promote, and undertake various ambitious GANIC initiatives cannot be sustained by just a handful of active members. Which brings me to the final issue I'd like to talk with you about tonight. We are about to hear from two incredibly worthy candidates for the only contested position in this election, president of GANIC. Emma and Mike are both among our most esteemed colleagues and both are truly outstanding tour guides. GANIC has benefited immensely from their admirable energy, visions, and commitment. It is very difficult for me to personally conceive of the board without both of them being on it. And I'm personally at a complete loss on who I'm gonna cast my vote for. But with that being said, I actually wish that all the positions up for election were contested by many different members, all of you and all of you at home. The strength of any association is best promoted by contesting visions and voices rather than the passive acceptance of an assured and uncontested election of a few. Beware the delusional demagogue who tries to sell you the con. I alone can fix things. <laughs> In the coming weeks, you'll be voting on GANIC's immediate future board composition. But I challenge every GANIC member to think beyond the next couple of years and consider as well what would you like GANIC to look like in five or 10 years? And how will you help make that future a reality? If elected as a vice president of GANIC, I think it's a fait accompli, but I will make efforts towards increasing volunteerism among our members and cultivating the next generation of premier tour guides and GANIC leaders, a priority number one. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Kevin. And I just want to add, in five or ten years, I know that my hearing will be worse than it is now, <laughs> and I'll probably have one of those automatic walkers. So anyway, we come to the, uh, well, there's one more. Uh, Jonathan Turra is also a candidate for vice president, but uh, I don't, are you reading a statement? Oh, okay. All right. So Deb Blau current member at large is going to read Jonathan's statement. Hi, what a room full of uh, extraordinary people. Um, kind of glad I don't have to use my words, but I do have the words of another extraordinary person. And uh, first, this is a lie. 
My name is Jonathan Tour. <laughs> yes. And I'm running for the position of uh, vice president. When I was first asked by the current board to step into the formidable shoes left behind by uh, Christina Lombardi, I was honored. Honored, but not just to take up the reins from Christina, who had done so much for the organization during the short time she served, but honored also to be joining, as so many have said, uh, such a dedicated and talented team of individuals. I've been a member of this organization for nearly 15 years, and I don't believe there's ever been a storm, stronger board during all that time. If elected, I look forward to serving with another excellent team of GANIC members. I come to this moment with no extravagant campaign promises, but that I will work my hardest to build upon the contributions of so many strong boards over the years. In the time since I've joined GANIC, I've seen how hard it has been to get us to where we are today. And I have no intention of letting our forward motion be slowed. I believe that despite the setback that COVID has dealt our industry, Organic guides are still poised at a great moment of opportunity. If I'm mindful of one thing, as I hope to serve the membership, it is that Gannet guides are the best in the city and they want to and ought to be working. As the situation evolves, I'll be seeking out ways to continue to elevate Gannet's position in the international travel and tourism ecosystem as well as preparing the membership and the members for the new challenges that lie ahead. My goal will be to help find ways to support members in their search for work. A little about me. I have spent all but one year of my life in the tri-state area. After being born in New York, I became a suburban kid who dreamed of the big city, making frequent visits to see relatives and to explore. When I could, I returned and earned a BFA from School of Visual Arts. For years, I lived in Brooklyn with my wife and worked in a number of different fields, magazine pu uh, production, public relation, fine arts, and finally, real estate. That was when I became a guide. At the moment, I realized that I was enjoying sales less than I was enjoying in introducing people to new neighborhoods. That, and from hearing about being a guide from Mark and uh, Matt Levy when they were in on WNYC. By the way, that's the power of getting our name out there in the world. One mention on the way radio was enough to send me down the path of becoming a guide. In the last two years, my family and I moved to a home in New Jersey where I continued my work as a guide. Now that our boys are bigger, I finally have more time to dedicate to Gannick, which is why this is the time I choose to run for a position on the board. In the past, I have served Gannick as a founding member of the awards committee, a columnist for guidelines, and as a member of the health and safety committee. I'm currently chair of the constitution committee, a member of the ethics committee, and one of the founding members, as well as an instructor, of the certification committee. I ask for your support and hope to serve you on the GANIC board for the next two years. So that's from John. Thank you, Deb, and thank you, Jonathan. So now we come to the uh, final position, which is really the one, uh, president. So I'm gonna ask Michael Morgenthal to come up to the podium. Okay. All right. Good evening, everybody. Thank you, Bob. And thank you to all of our amazing candidates who have decided to uh, step up and join the board this year. It is uh, obviously a fait accompli except for the position of president. And uh, I uh, am deciding to run for president this year. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm one of the two vice presidents currently, and I've served on the board for the past six years. And to echo what most of, well, all of the other current board members have said, it's been an incredible honor to serve with these amazing group of people, uh, not just this two years, which obviously our current board had to deal with some certainly unanticipated consequences uh, or uh, issues in the world. But uh, in any event, everybody who I've served with on the board for the past six years has been absolutely incredible and inspiring. And I, I thank you all for 
uh, allowing me to work with you. So um, now I am proud of my role in making GANIC one of the leading tour guide associations in the world. In addition to serving on the board for six years, I've also been the chair of the industry relations committee. And I just wanted to highlight in particular two particular initiatives that I uh, had a very strong role in that I think demonstrates how dedicated I am to our membership and also to the tour guiding industry at large. Uh, number one is the Cancel the Tour database, which I started in the early days of COVID. Uh, I conceived of it, created it, and administered and monitored it throughout its, its existence. And uh, we tracked over $3 million in canceled tours, unfortunately. But that helped us make the case that tour guides as freelancers needed to be included in unemployment and other benefits from the government. I'm not saying that it was me who convinced Governor Cuomo to do that, but it played a very a small role in including us in that, uh, in that initiative. And of course, that was such a lifeline for all of us in the past two years. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is Guide Week. Hopefully most of you took advantage of it. It grew out of the job fair, which I started and have been running since the year 2017. And um, with our amazing panelists and guest speakers, plus an online job fair that featured upwards of 50 tour operators, we help put guides back to work and prepare guides for the touring world in life after COVID. Most importantly, Guide Week netted close to $10,000 in profit for the association, which wasn't our goal, but we were certainly happy to do it. And it's an incredible windfall at a time when we are certainly at risk, unfortunately, of losing membership because of the COVID pandemic. So whether it's initiatives like this or representing GANIC at industry events uh, around the city or around the country, around the world, including serving on the New York City Company Allied Coalition for Tourism Recovery, I've always had one thought in mind. Will this benefit GANIC and you, our members? That's why I fought so strongly against the restrictions against tour guides at the Statue of Liberty and Ellis Island a couple of years ago and support the efforts to ensure that guide, live guides return to the double-decker buses. We're entering a critical and challenging time for our association and for our industry. I believe I've demonstrated that I have the vision to lead GANIC through these turbulent times. And that's why I decided to run for president against my good friend and colleague, Emma Guest Gonzalez, who has done a fine job as president the past two years. But there is one big issue that she's failed to address, and it's going to be something that I would make a priority if I'm elected president. As chair of the IT committee, Emma's responsible for the GANIC website. And to be perfectly honest, in my opinion, our current website is a bit of a mess. It's not really user-friendly, it's outdated, hard to navigate, and not dynamic, and doesn't really tell GANIC's story well, both to the general public, nor to members of the travel trade at large. The site has not evolved to serve GANIC's needs as we have grown as an organization. Uh, I will tell you that a few years ago, the board voted to have the IT committee solicit bids to redesign the GANIC site, but unfortunately, Emma didn't really follow through on this. She came back to the board saying, we we're just gonna stick with our regular web developer and make minor tweaks along the way. Unfortunately, that's no longer good enough for you, the membership, and for GANIC as an organization. Uh, GANIC Network was, was last redesigned in 2013, which is really a lifetime ago when you talk about the digital sphere. So as president, my number one priority will begin the work to redesign GANIC.org to reflect the dynamic organization we've become. I want this to be an inclusive process where all members will have a chance to weigh in on what the next iteration of our website will be. And we'll also look to the sites of other tour guide associations and professional associations, regardless of industry, to look for best practices and ideas. So in the end, we'll create a dynamic industry-leading website that puts GANIC members front and center, both to the public and to the travel trade. And it will be a uh, site that will have the ability to evolve as our industry continues to evolve as well. My other top priorities, President, is to help up GANIC's PR game. For example, if you look at another initiative that I undertook to tour your own city, um, unfortunately, it never really got the traction we hoped for. And that was in part because GANIC publicities, GANIC's publicity capabilities are quite limited. That's no aspersion on our great PR chair, Jeremy Wilcox, who does as best as he can with limited time, money, and resources uh, and help. Uh, but we have such a great story to tell and we want that we just need to do a better job of telling it. And as president, I'll push to devote more resources to PR to garner more attention for GANIC and our members by highlighting things like the awards, the certification class, and guide week, just to name a few. Last, as president, I'll work to improve communication between our committees. Each GANIC committee often seems to exist in its own bubble without much synergy with other parts of the association. This is something that Kevin Lawrence, as a member of the board, has brought up several times, and I wholeheartedly agree with his push in this direction. As president, I'll work to make sure that GANIC's various committees and initiatives are all pulling in the same direction. 
It's a critical role, but one that really the Gannick president is uniquely positioned to take care of. Unfortunately, it hasn't been a high priority for our past leadership, but with everything that we've grown and are starting to push for, it's important that we're all pushing in the same direction. We can accomplish so much more by working together rather than all working in our own little spheres. I think I heard the tone, so I think I'm basically done. I just wanted to say our membership is an amazing collection of intelligent, passionate, inventive, and creative professionals. And I'm honored to call each and every one of you colleagues and friends. Uh, I am extremely passionate about helping tour guides and elevating our industry both here and around the world. And for that reason, I humbly ask for your vote to be president, the next president of GAMIC. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michael. So um, Emma's uh, absence was uh, last minute. So uh, she did not assign anyone to read a statement and it will be posted on the website. Okay, so um, before we move on and next on the agenda are committee reports, I just want to add. Uh, well, we should at least see if there are questions. For, yeah. for Michael. Are there any questions? for that position. Yes, Matt. My question really is for everyone who's running, but naturally the president would be the, the you know, where the buck stops on this. Uh, with full respect, of course, to the fact that there's been a pandemic to deal with and that no one expected it. I do remember at the last election, there was discussion of the, the issue that Gannick still doesn't look very much like New York City. I think it was Kevin who pointed that and vocalized that. I thought it was a very good point and that there was going to be a big priority in trying to improve Gannick's diversity. Now, we've had other things on the table, but what's your plan, you know, folks, uh, for, for looking at that in the future? I can address that initially, but happy. I'll address it initially, but certainly any and every other board member or potential board member should come up and address this as well. And uh, Matt, that is a uh, great memory, obviously, that it was something that was discussed a lot during the last election. And I will tell you that in the first couple of months of this current board prior to COVID, uh, we did establish a diversity subcommittee to try to uh, make Gannick look a little bit more like the rest of New York City. Uh, and Kevin uh, volunteered to head that up. It just exploded when, when COVID happened. It just kind of fell by the wayside. So it is certainly something that I think we would love to re-examine and re-inaugurate, whether it's Kevin leading that initiative or someone else. Uh, but absolutely, it's definitely a worthy, uh, worthy consideration and something I'm sure the next board will, will continue to look into. Thanks, Mike. Uh, so let me just explain what happened with that particular subcommittee and uh, more inclusiveness and diversity with COVID hitting this. The way in which we approached it is that we might be able to find people in community colleges or area universities. But uh, higher education has really been roiled by COVID and continues to be so because student registrations are significantly down. So one of the other things that part of my profession is I also teach in, in higher education. And I can tell you that a lot of these types of programs that are designed for students, uh, particularly of color, to, to get internships and to think about different ways that they can apply the, the skill sets that they're learning uh, that these are second thoughts, right? And so there's a lot, so organizing this both on my level, and I will admit that I sort of dropped the ball, but that's because uh, one of the things I also had to do at the initial stage of COVID when I undertook this, and of course the Black Lives Matter gave it particularly urgency, and I did want to, and I agree that going forward, I would like to pick this ball back up. But um, at that time, I also was having to transition all of my classes onto line. And so it's just that, the everything, the stars didn't align, even though we recognized this even before the pandemic, it became even more urgent with Black Lives Matter. But this gets again to, I forget, I, I think Patrick said, you know, but one of the, the best ways to, to accomplish this goal is not actually at the board level, it's at the membership level for you guys to go out there and reach out to existing guides who are uh, BIPOC people, you know, Black, Indigenous, people of color who are tour guides who may not know about Ghana or may not feel like they are welcome. I mean, I personally would like to see somebody who is BIPOC actually head that up rather than me. 
we have enough gay in, in the <laughs> membership. So. Tell my father. <laughs> um, it's absolutely not necessary, but any other candidates are welcome to address the question. So, okay. I can I have another question? Yes. I'll turn it back over to Bob. Oh, can I go ahead? Oh, sure. Now I'm, I'm coming up to use the microphone because I know having attended meetings at home and someone asks a question from the audience, then no one at home has any idea what the question is. So I wanted to put myself in the home audience. I think what Michael has suggested on the two fronts with both IT web design and the PR are a fabulous new opportunity for the membership who have backgrounds in these fields to please reach out immediately, no matter who wins this election and support the entire organization with their background and their skill sets. And that's basically for all the different things that you've heard sitting at home and have always wondered, well, who's doing it? you're the ones who could do it. So I'm pleading with the membership, if you have a background, pick up the phone, send an email, and, and if nothing else, just give ideas and, and say, you know, maybe I can't do it at this point in time, but I know somebody who can do it, and I'd like to connect you with that person. And a lot of this is going to be networking. It doesn't have to fall individually to you, but please, please think about all of your skill sets. It's the most incredibly talented organization out there. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Anyone else have any? Yes, Heidi. Yeah, I have a question along with PR because I, I do feel like that's where we're lacking. Uh, what the board thinks about their stance on the award ceremony going forward. Is there anybody who wants to take that before I pump them? Any, any other candidates want to? Yes, I wanted to know as far as PR, like, is this, it seems to me that that's what we're putting a lot of our, our faith into is this award ceremony. I would like to know what, what the board stance is or the president stance is, a future president, on going forward with the award ceremony. Sure. Well, I think I can handle this, not necessarily from my treasurer perspective, but as the current uh, uh, now long term chair of the PR committee, um, one of the major purposes, at least as I see it, of the Apple Awards is PR. I don't know if our esteemed chair would uh, concur with that, but it is it is about advancing the awareness of GANIC and the importance of guiding out there in the um, in the world. Um, Certainly, we remain committed to during the awards. Obviously, this past awards we did virtually online. Um, that will be the case with the next one. Um, certainly, if we're not back to an in-person ceremony by 2023, we're all doing something wrong, um, not just in terms of the organization, but um, yeah, it's public relations. Now, I will speak to the fact that in terms of getting press and publicity from the awards, we've never gotten as much as we have desired. And that, you know, maybe I can take some blame for that, but we send out press releases every year. Every year, you know, I will go on, um, on Twitter, all of our favorite hellscape, and I will tweet at every New York reporter I can find on that website. And um, thank you, Ann, and we'll tell them about it, send them a press release and all the information. And you know, tell them we tell them like we'll give you free tickets. You're gonna get to come to this thing. There's gonna be a, a pre-party and booze and stuff. I'm um, in past years, and you just don't get people there. You know, you can give people information. You can't make them do anything with it. The depressingly, just this random aside, depressingly low turnout in yesterday's election. There's a sign you can put all these stuff out there for people, and you can't make them show up. So I would just say, in terms of the spirit of what everybody's talking about here, is if any member. Uh, whether of the committee or otherwise has ideas about how we can get more people interested in initiatives like the awards, how we can get the press to cover the awards. Um, I am I am all ears, uh, but it's just, you know, it's a case where like a lot of things we, you know, like what Michael was saying with Tour Your Own City, which I still think was a brilliant idea. And we, we did a lot of great, we got on New York One 
which was one of which was my goal as PR to get us on New York One for Tour Your Own City, and we did it. But but you know you know sometimes these things pay dividends and sometimes they uh, they don't. So we try, um, and I'm always open to other ideas about how that can be improved. I have a few thoughts, but I, I want to make sure that any other potential board member has a chance to speak. I, I just want to give a little additional, not related to the current subject. Oh, right. well, that's, let's stick on the current yeah, subject. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, great. All right. So uh, for those of you at home, if you didn't hear the question, uh, it was about the future of the award ceremony, basically in context of what sort of PR bank for the buck Yannick is getting out of it. Um, so the awards is one of our signature events, and certainly last year and this year, as Jeremy said, it's going to be an online event, and we all look forward to uh, hopefully getting back to in-person. Um, I'm actually glad this question came up because I wanted to address one quick thing about this. Um, through the course of the past year or so, or a few months actually, since you know, kind of we were starting to think about elections, uh, I've heard a couple of whispers and rumors that if I'm elected president of Yannick, that I'm going to look to shut down the award ceremony. And I just want to put that to rest that nothing will be further from the truth. Um, I do not think the awards are perfect by any stretch of the imagination, and I think we can improve them. And we've already started having those conversations with Matt and the committee earlier this year, and certainly um, we'll continue to have those uh, discussions moving forward. But it is a great event. It's a signature event of Gannick's calendar. I know everybody looks forward to it. But as one of the most, if not the most expensive uh, initiatives of GANIC each and every year, it's important that the organization and the membership get the proper bang for the buck. And that's really what my goal would be as a president, uh, is to make sure that we keep moving forward in that direction and it doesn't become just kind of a static event. Uh, so, uh, but again, I just wanted to have the chance to say that if you've heard the rumors that I'm, if I were president, I'm going to move to shut down the awards, nothing could be further from the truth. So I'm glad I had a chance to address that as well. Thank you, Michael. All right. So, um, go ahead. Phew. Racial diversity and the awards, all this heavy duty stuff. All I wanted to come back on Mike for was to explain why a little earlier you heard me say, my name is Jonathan Tura. There's so much sickness. You might think, wow, is Jonathan sick? Why was he not able to attend? Does he not care about what's going on? Those things are not true. He's looking at colleges in Vermont. So he has two more colleges to go. So just something for us to celebrate. And for his son. For his sons, yes. So many of you already know that. But I just thought I should add that piece of background information. Okay. And thanks to Kit, I came back up to the mic to say that. Thank you, Deb. Yes, Cindy. This is Michael. Oh, you know, I can, this is the right. You know, I have to get on the mic. Yeah, because the people can, can, can I'll repeat the question if you don't want to get on. No, that's okay. I'm sorry. Not a courtesy for them. Hi, guys. At home from here, Michael. Thank you. That was a great presentation. I was impressed before with your work. I was even more impressed, reminding me of things that you have done or going to do. My question is: I'm very glad you mentioned the IT. Um, it was startling to me, and the IT department in Ember know that every so often I check it. I'm a cynist, realist, whatever, and things are off. Searches don't work on your own portfolios if you ever look at your own profile. But my real startling thing is when I discovered that Gannett disappeared, the certificate expired. Now, my question is, why don't we, will you be... Uh, <laughs> Will you support the idea of paying somebody to continuously maintain, paying somebody to maintain the website so that the certificate, you go to find Gannick.org, it disappeared. Uh, Emma took care of it right away when I wrote her, in all fairness. But cyber squatting, anybody could have stolen the Gannick website in the middle. So will Gannick pay for somebody to continuously maintain the website? That's my question. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, Cindy. Uh, it's, a, it's a very, it's a good and it's an important question. And it's not one that I know I can give you a full answer 
to. And certainly it's not just up to whoever the president will be. It's certainly the board and the IT committee working together. Obviously, um, you know, as we have become a bigger association with lots more initiatives, like when the website was redesigned, there wasn't an award ceremony. There wasn't a certification class, right? Back in 2013, there wasn't a job fair, just as three examples, right? Perhaps our three signature events every year. Um, so the idea is, okay, now we need a website that's going to really reflect who we are as an association. So in terms of a security uh, certificate, which I think is what you're referring to, um, I remember seeing the initial email that went to Emma about that a while ago. Uh, I don't know that I was specifically aware that that had become an issue again, uh, but all cards are on the table, like I would say. Um, I do think that um, we need to think about how perhaps a full-time webmaster or at least a, you know, not full-time, but a contracted webmaster can maintain our site. Uh, because as Kevin was saying before, especially now that COVID is coming to an end, everybody, not just members of the board, but members of the IT committee and the membership in general, we're just going to have less time to devote to these things. So uh, not to get too deep into detail, but my original, my, my thinking about IT about the website, I should say, is that in the first year of the coming board, we would start figuring out what we want the site to be and what that all would entail. And then we would be able to budget the money for the second year, because we've already established our budget for this coming year. We'd be able to budget the money for the web design, web redesign. And then of course, as part of that, perhaps looking into having a full-time uh, web person or, like I said, a consultant, an outside consultant who does more than our current web developer does, which is basically address issues when we bring them up to Sam. Um, you know, it's not a proactive relationship. Um, so, uh, like I said, from my perspective, all cards are on the table when it comes to that. And that's why I said in my remarks that I want it to be a very collaborative process, not just with the board and the IT committee, but everybody here has an online presence. Everybody has different ideas. Uh, I might be inviting trouble by saying I want everybody to weigh in, but I think it's such an important part of who we are and how we present ourselves to the public and to the travel trade that it's time for us to, to look at that again. So um, kind of in a roundabout way, I'm agreeing with you without getting too specific. I hope that uh, that answers your questions. Have a politician. There you go. So, okay. Thank you for the questions. Want to address this question? Okay. Okay. You want to address yes. This? So I just want to say that I think that this is a great issue uh, the, to think about the redesign of the web and how it can be uh, more user friendly. Um, but because Emma is not here, I just don't want the impression to be created like this has an urgency because having sat on the board, I have to say that this is not an issue that I feel has come up too often. So I don't want to press this too hard, but I just don't want, because Emma's not here to do as both the current president and the head of the IT committee, I just want to personally say that I think, um, look to, I guess, her written statement to see how she would address these issues as well. Yes, Michael. Yeah, all right, first of all, why don't you come down to the microphone so the home audience for the home audience. For the home audience. Okay. First of all, I do want to uh, congratulate and thank the current board. You guys have been amazing. I am so proud of each and every one of you. And I'm thrilled to see new people stepping up as well because my whole thing was get involved. And thank you, Kevin, for carrying that along as well, encouraging people to get involved. My question is, um, can you please tell us why Emma is not here, please? Because all we've heard is that she's not here. She's right. she's done a fabulous job. I think everybody deserves to know why she's not here tonight. So could you please do that? Thank you. Yeah, that was going to be the next bit of business after the round of questioning. Uh, to put it very simply, but with all respect to Emma's privacy, uh, she picked up this sound equipment that you're looking at. She drove here with every intention of being at this meeting. She pulled up and received the phone call of an emergency, a family emergency that had to be dealt with. It was sufficient import that she turned around and immediately went home. So that is why she is not here. I can assure you, she takes this process and she takes her position and she takes everything about CAC with the utmost seriousness and sincerity. 
but life happens. I know she'd rather be here, but she simply could not. Thank you. Thank you so just to put this on top of what Patrick said, uh, you might have seen me uh, at the beginning, I got up and went out to the back. That was Emma Collin. And um, she uh, was saying, you know, it's been crazy with her family situation. She didn't have a chance to really put together a full statement yet. And she was going to try to do it on the run to have one of us read it. And I said to her, I said, you can certainly do that, but there's about 25 people in the audience and you have bigger things to worry about. So we are definitely going to encourage everybody in the audience here and our membership to pay very particular attention to the written statements as they are posted. Okay. Uh, I would certainly love to have Emma here to tell you her ideas. I, I think I told you I admire her greatly. And um, so, you know, whoever the membership is wise enough to choose myself or Emma uh, will certainly be in, in great hands. And if I am not the winner of the presidency, she will have my 100% full support. Uh, but uh, that just wanted to let you know that she's, even in the midst of this crisis, she's still very much thinking about Gannick. So uh, just wanted to add that as well. Oh, I'm sorry. I just want to turn it over to Jaron for um, a moment. We, we did have a question here from um, Eileen Rourke uh, in the, uh, the Zoom chat, and it's actually a really great question. Uh, so I do want to make sure it's addressed. And her question is, how will Gannick board candidates, especially the president role, balance their tour guide jobs against the Gannick volunteer time? Uh, obviously with the caveat that we certainly hope our work uh, will um, increase. And um, I'll, I'll actually take that first because it is for all uh, board uh, candidates. Um, balancing tour guide jobs against the volunteer work is, it's, it's, it's a lot. Um, and I would guess, this is just hazarding a guess, why did not more members nominate themselves or volunteer to run as candidates in this election? And I would guess is the fact of taking what little free time we as adults have and volunteering it for an unpaid position is not quite, you know, the most appealing thing on earth. Um, but we do this because we care. And, you know, each of us makes those decisions differently depending on our positions. I know with the, uh, you know, the treasurer, and I could tell you, it, we really do care about this. I, I think I had a conversation with Emma and at least one other member of the board uh, in this last year talking about having uh, kind of disagreements with our spouses in terms of how much time we put into uh, Gannick. Um, there's no chance in hell my husband is watching this, but if he is, I can tell you, yes. Um, he has regularly commented to me that I, I should spend less time on this Gannick stuff um, and more time on other things. And, you know, it, but this really does matter to us. Like, no one, you know, we're not getting paid, but we do this because we care. We put as much time um, as we can. I only wish most members knew how much time all of these people around me have given up over the last two years to, uh, to Gannick. Um, you know, how many gray hairs we've all added because of this. But uh, I could just tell you, we, we, we do our best. Um, and, you know, as with Emma tonight, sometimes real life has to take precedent. Um, but we, we, we try our best. We can't be uh, we perfect. I would tell you this comparable to a lot of other associations in the United States, the amount of time that these current uh, board members put in is really amazing. Um, so that's just my take is it is a good role because you do deserve to know, I will say this, you do deserve to know that the board members that you are electing are going to honor the commitment they're making. And this was something, you know, I really said, you know, uh, in the past is when we are being nominated and when we accept that nomination, we are making a promise to you that we are going to do the things we said, and we are going to give our time. So that's just my take on that. Any other prospective board members want to address that specific question? John? Yeah, I just want to echo that, what Jeremy said about the spouses. <laughs> and I don't think I was in on that conversation he alluded to, but I've had other conversations. Uh, and like, uh, you know, we, when the pandemic first happened and we were basically all out of work completely. And, you know, we started meeting not just monthly, but twice a month, which, you know, 
was double, essentially doubling the amount of meeting work that we were doing. And we were doing other things as well. And, you know, we would get at the end of a, a meeting that and they often go like three hours or something like that. And they were on Zoom, so it was a little easier transfer wise. But my wife would come up and say, what are you guys talking about? You're not getting tours. You're, you know, like, you're, remember the guide association? What are you talking about? You're not guiding. And so, you know, yeah, it, it has been stressful. But I do, I, I do want to just comment on the amazing amount of commitment that my colleagues give to this. And I don't want to, I, I, I hesitate to single people out because uh, that I don't want to suggest, you know, other people aren't, but, you know, the amount of uh, volunteerism that Jeremy puts in yeah. is, is just yeah, and obviously everybody agrees with that. Uh, you know, and that's just an example of the kind of commitment that uh, our board shows to you and to this organization. Thanks. And did you want to address this? Or was it's, it something, it's something okay. along the lines. So um, I'm answering every question in part because this is the only race that's in doubt in part that specific question asked the president specifically. Um, I, as vice president, I've watched how much Emma has had to do the last two years. And I was actually even more amazed at what there was to do, even more so than when Mr. Dillinger was our esteemed president before. I don't know if I paid quite as much attention then when I was a little lower on the rung in terms of the board. Um, but just overall, uh, I mean, to answer your question, um, like everything else you get put in, you get out of it what you put into it. And I think uh, the members of the recent boards have certainly uh, gotten a lot of satisfaction out of being able to try to advocate for our membership and for the tour guiding industry as a whole. Um, and so, you know, it's like anything else. I mean, you heard Kit is a member of 976 different organizations, right? And yet she is still willing to give her time to Gannick both before being on the board, but also as a member of certification, but also now uh, as a member, a prospective member uh, of the board. So, like everything else in life, it's choice, right? And this is something that we choose to do. And it's been incredible to see, like I said, for the six years that I've been on the board and even before that, the level of dedication and the, there's really no reason to think that there's gonna be any fall off there. We're just gonna have to balance our priorities a little bit and buy nicer gifts for our spouses, so. I just wanted to you know, add one thing in terms of encouraging volunteerism, what, how I first got involved with Gannix when I first joined the organization in 2016, I remember looking at like our social media presence and the PR um, and thinking like, this could be run much better. This could be nicer. But I've always, I've always been a believer of, well, if you're going to complain about all oh, this thing isn't being done the way I want it, if I'm not going to put my time or my money, you know, I'm not going to put my time where my mouth is, then I should shut up. And so I volunteered and, you know, I heard that at that time, uh, Amada, who was really wonderful that she was stepping down from PR said, I'll take it over. I'll do it because I had ideas, I wanted to execute them, and I volunteered and I executed them. Um, and, you know, that's, that was the key. And I, like Michael said, you know, and it gave me great personal satisfaction to see that working out for the organization. And that's, you know, I think the key is all of us are, are running, um, and, and not just the candidates for board, but the people who serve on the committees who really should be honored as well. They had ideas about things that should happen and they volunteered their time to make them happen. That's why we are we are doing this. And I encourage those members who think this, that, or the other thing should be done better is to volunteer their time um, because that's why we do it. Is you know, if you're going to complain about something, you got to put your time where your mouth is. And that's what I've tried to do um, since I, I joined Gannick. And I'll just say before I hand this back over to Bob, is a big thank you to everyone who serves on every committee in any capacity, because you guys are putting your time where your mouth is. And I, I really appreciate that. And I know you've been waiting just, to say something. Yeah, just, just a suggestion. Um, since Emma can't be here, maybe it would be possible to have her read her statement on YouTube so that we can all kind of get a visual in addition. So, and just as a guide, I just want to say, when you're walking out of here, when you go to the Staten Island Ferry, if you look to the right, you will see the brand new ferry and the oldest ferry that's being taken out of commission. And they're right next to each other, which is kind of cool. The JFK and the new one that's named after the guy who died in 9-11. So, yeah, wait, 
Thank you, Ann. All right. So um, I believe we will move on next to committee reports, but I just want to take one moment because this is one of my last times that I'll ever be up here. I've had the privilege and honor of serving the Gannick membership for the last six years on three different terms. I spent four years under a wonderful president, Michael Dillinger, and two years under an equally wonderful president, Emma Guest Gonzalez. It's been a privilege and I have gotten to know so many people on the board and this last board, I'm gonna leave out a name, but they're all sitting here today, except for Emma uh, and Jonathan Turner and Christina Lombardi who had to leave Gannett. Uh, you're an amazing group of people and this organization wouldn't function without people like you. And I thank you. And I'm thrilled to have three new people joining and we're gonna suck you dry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just wanna make a note because what's one follow up to Eileen's question. And I just realized we haven't actually addressed this at a meeting. So the question was in terms of helping Gannick and its volunteers with work about our admin assistant. So many of you may remember uh, a couple of years ago, we hired um, a young woman named Sid to be officially an admin assistant. She was being paid by Gannick to assist with check-in um, and other uh, tasks. Um, unfortunately, and part of it was that when the pandemic started, a lot of what she was assisting was with was in-person work, which we could not give her during the pandemic. And she eventually got another actual job uh, over the last few months. So. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to have that. It will be part of my work uh, as treasurer uh, when things slow down over the winter to help Gannick refill that position. Um, we did allocate money in this recent budget for the admin assistant. Uh, so it will be the goal to, um, if Sid will not be able to continue to give us her time uh, to, to find someone else to do that, that work, um, which is a paid part-time freelance position. So. Okay, so we're gonna move on to committee reports. Uh, I am at a loss because they're not listed on the agenda and I didn't think I'd be up here tonight for this portion. Oh, you have them, very nice, thank you. All right, so Matt, you're here, uh, chair of the awards committee. Thank you. Well, uh, I wasn't expecting the awards uh, to already be in the spotlight tonight, but uh, you uh, you know some of the things that we've been dealing with and, and certainly wanting to get better publicity has always been, you know, not only a major, but frankly, the major function of the awards. Uh, and the good news that I have tonight is that for the first time we have something we have wanted, we have a master of ceremonies for the awards who is currently with New York One. Jeremy Wilcox is the hero of the day on this because he was our liaison, but I want to thank him for getting us the uh, New York One reporter, Shannon Ferry, to be our host. Uh, we also have a couple of presenters that we've managed to cast. There are some that we're still in talks with their representation and stuff like that. Some, some uh, you know, presenters we have pushy, friendly relationships with and others we have to talk with their teams. So, you know, some we're talking with, but, uh, for the third time, we're gonna have, you know, I always try to balance between our, you know, repeat, you know, presenters who are our old friends and our new people who are our fresh faces. And so we have our third time presenter uh, in the field of outstanding uh, museum exhibitions. We have the founder of Brooklyn's uh, Museum of the African Diaspora and Arts, New York City Council member Lori Cumbo uh, has agreed to present. Uh, and also uh, in book writing, nonfiction. Uh, some of us, we are all tour guides. And so one of the great holy texts of our uh, research is The Island of the Center of the World by Russell Shorto. Russell Shorto has agreed to present. Uh, now, the other big news is that voting for the three nominations will close at the end of this week, Saturday. Saturday night at midnight going into Sunday is your last chance to go online and say, I think so and so should be nominated in such and such category. Uh, the following week, the committee is going to get together, vet those pre-nominations and present the final four. 
So at the end of the night tonight or in the morning, I'm going to ask Jeremy to once again resend the link to the Google Doc with the three nominations. Each category should be reasonably explained. And I will ask Jeremy to please include the announcement that this Saturday will be your last chance to do that, at which point the committee will move forward. Uh, real quick while I'm up here, I want to offer a huge thanks to the folks at the St. George Theater and to our wonderful tour guide, Vincent, who did, I don't know if he's still here, but if anybody else is as impressed as I am with what people have done with this theater, I want to remind you that one of our categories is Outstanding Achievement in Support of New York City Preservation. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Thank you. Okay, so uh, as education core member and in the absence of our chair, Nina Mende, who's watching us from home, I'm just going to quickly read um, what we've done, keep it simple. Uh, we want to thank people who have done our past FAMS, October 5th, an encore, Live in Person by Trish Sullivan. Uh, October 9th, Susan and I organized a day trip to Bannon Castle and Beacon. October 12th, celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month, a virtual tour of Spanish Harlem's murals and mosaics with Lee Hallingby. And October 27th, a virtual tour, Art Deco on the Grand Concourse, done by Tony Robbins. We have two coming up. Anne has already mentioned that I'm registered. November 11th, Anne McDermott, the media moguls of Midtown. And December 9th, another year, another Dyke Lights tour by Jeremy Wilcox. And again, anyone interested in submitting a FAM, an idea for a PPP, educationorganic.org. Thank you. Uh, next is industry relations. I'm listed, but we're here. You've got it. Well, I was better looking, but I'm a little funnier. So. <laughs> Um, so just a quick report tonight. Sorry, let me just call it up on my phone. Go. Okay, so um, short report this month. I uh, just wanted to remind everybody about our upcoming membership meeting venues. And thank you very much to Bob and to Harvey for uh, really spearheading organizing this. Uh, so as you already heard, on Wednesday, December 8th, our next meeting will be at the United Palace Theater up in Washington Heights. Uh, and uh, just as a reminder, it is not the first Wednesday of the month. It is the second Wednesday of the month. I know we have gotten some questions about how we've moved the schedule around a little bit. In the post-COVID world, it has been difficult to find venues. So we're being a little bit more, uh, not loosey-goosey, but being have to be a little more flexible with our scheduling. Certainly, it is our desire moving forward to make it uh, pretty consistent with the first Wednesday in the month as we move into 2022. But I just wanted to mention that briefly. Uh, January 5th. Our uh, first meeting of the new year will actually be back at the downtown headquarters, the same location where uh, the October meeting took place. And um, we, uh, I believe we chose that space because that meeting is going to be a little bit different and set up well to what, uh, uh, what we're uh, looking to accomplish at that meeting. Uh, and then February 2nd, we'll be at the China Institute, uh, which is great in downtown Manhattan as well. Uh, as I said, big thanks to Bob and Harvey for their hard work in finding these venues. We are always looking for new venues, new possible venues. So certainly shoot an email to industryrelationsorganic.org with a contact name. Uh, just as a reminder, uh, in Manhattan and downtown Brooklyn, we tend to attract between 60 and 80 people. And then when we tend to be anywhere else around New York City, as you can see, the numbers tend to be a little bit smaller. So keep that in mind in terms of uh, when you, if you have prospective venues and you want to shoot them uh, our way. Um, a couple other quick things. We are just starting in the planning for the next guide week. We haven't even selected dates for that as of yet, but we are certainly going to need a large army of volunteers, both in the planning and the execution of guide week. So if anybody is interested in participating in that, once again, shoot an email to industryrelationsorganic.org and we'll let you know when uh, meetings for that start in earnest. Uh, and then last but not least, um, some I hope you all saw the email this week that today uh, was the deadline that the board had imposed or selected for uh, members who wanted to apply for the stipend 
to uh, go to the WFTGA conference this February in uh, Serbia. And uh, the board will be considering any of the applications we got at our next board meeting. But several members actually mentioned to me, and I think to a couple of other board members that uh, with everything that's going on with COVID right now, um, they're not ready to make that decision yet or not. So at the board level, we will probably discuss the extension of that deadline. That is not official yet, but I just wanted to let you guys know in case anybody is, falls into that category, like you're thinking about going, but you're on the fence, so you don't want to put your name in yet, put the stipend. We're going to discuss it at the next board meeting. I think it's likely that we will extend the deadline uh, for anybody who wants to apply for the stipend, but stay tuned for that. So, And that's all I got for industry relations. Hey, Mike. Okay, so next up is membership committee. Please welcome Derek Chan. Thank you. So I do want to recognize our newest provisional members. We recently had three new provisional members. So welcome to George Bedecker, and Andrea Papagiorgio, and Viviana Veneri, if you're listening to this uh, wherever you are. That brings our current active organic membership now up to 335. So we do have uh, a good amount right now. Uh, last week on Monday, we recently had our most recent organic uh, networking happy hour. That was over at the Horns Hook Tavern. We had about 30 folks in attendance. And thanks to uh, Cindy Ladopoulos, uh, Tony DeSante, and Mark Levy for helping to organize that. We are in the process of uh, planning for a post-holiday party. I believe Tony wanted to say a few words about that. Yes, okay. Okay, yes, I am the, uh, the chair of the party subcommittee, which is under the membership. Uh, <laughs> all right, yes, and I decided to do this quite frankly because with the previous two post-holiday parties, I was not totally satisfied. They were at Novotel, they were quite expensive, and I kind of felt like we really didn't get our money's worth. As contrast to the previous two, uh, two that were previous to that, at Fino, where the price was extremely low, and we got all sorts of stuff, okay? So now we're kind of in looking for something that's perhaps in the middle, all right? Probably want to have a good price for people because uh, a lot of the members have not been earning much money, and see if we can't keep it down. Uh, we put, um, Emma put up on the uh, Gannick, um, uh Facebook page, anybody that wants to contribute any of the ideas, and uh, several good ideas have, have come in. Uh, first of all, let me back up just for a minute. Primarily, uh, thank you, Harvey is doing his research, his thing. He's been booking these things for years, really. And Cindy, they, they both have a background in this, and they're out there grinding away. But before they grind, we got to kind of decide exactly what we're go all going to agree on, all right? Um, let's see now, um, Cindy suggested perhaps instead of having an evening thing, we have kind of a brunch type thing. Um, I don't know if I would want to do that. I, I have in my mind, I, the many years that I've been doing this, it's always been this party at night celebrating, you know, what we did in the past year and all that kind of thing. And we've always had a DJ, previous to the previous two, we had enough money for a DJ and dancing. And uh, that's kind of in question as to whether or not we want to expend the money on that. Um, Adrian Cooper had a good idea on the line there. She said, perhaps we could have a two tier thing. In other words, if you don't want to pay for the open bar part of it, only pay for the open food, and then you buy your own uh, liquor. And, you know, there are people like Cindy that does not drink and Bob, right? And so why should you have to pay for it? You know, and I, I have to say, and if we were, if we were not paying for the, um, oh, I'm sorry, I, I was. No, that's good. If you say I don't drink. No, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I was thinking of Deborah. I'm sorry. Anyway, all right. Yes, there she is. Sorry. Um, so why should you have to pay for it, right? So if, if, it, if we only paid for, um, in case you don't know, Gannick pays for 50% for the members, 50% of the, the bill of, you know, in other words, if the venue wants 80 bucks, I only have to pay 40 and, and Gannick puts in the other 40, right? So if we are only doing the food part, that would bring down the price considerably and should be able to budget it out, right? Okay, uh, let's see here. And uh, 
Let me see here. Okay. And I think that that's pretty much what I have to say. And I just brought it up because, you know, we're open to everybody's input. And um, in case anybody has any comments about that or thoughts, you can express them now or go to the Facebook page and uh, take it from there. Any questions or any comments? Yes, Mike. Uh, are you still thinking that it will be the date that we've traditionally had it, which is, I believe, the second Monday in January? Is that still the idea? Yes, we usually have it, what, the first or second Monday in January. And as far as I know, that's what we're shooting for. When, when right, Harvey? Yes, yes the, Michael. The reason, the reason we go on the second Monday is because we use the January meeting to get people, that's where a lot of people do their renewal and buy the, the sign up for the event. It's like right. the last push, the January meeting. So right, the first Monday after, after the, January the January meeting. meeting. Good point. Anyone else? Okay, thank you. And just to clarify in terms of the budget, it's actually what was approved at the AGM was $3,000. So however that ends up being, uh, I believe the board was expecting about 50 members to attend or so. So if there happens to be less or more, uh, the amount would be kind of based upon that, but that's the amount that is budgeted. Uh, two other things I did want to mention. Uh, first of all, the Gannett Guide name badges. I know a number of you have already ordered them. Uh, there's a few of you that are wearing them now. I'm wearing mine. Jeremy has his. Uh, has his and a few others as well. Uh, we are continuing to uh, take orders for that. So if that's something that you want to order, you can have it done. Uh, definitely go to the website. It's uh, gannock.org slash benefits, the benefits page, all the details of how to order that, how much that cost is all on there. For those who have ordered them, I believe I've emailed everybody. If you haven't responded to your email, be sure to respond to that. Otherwise, uh, your badge will not be ordered. So definitely um, take a look at that. And then finally, I will be stepping down as membership committee chair. So if anybody, any members interested in taking over the role, uh, let me know. Feel free to email me in the committee, membership at gannick.org. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. Okay, so uh, last but not least, the newsletter committee. Where is Dave? <laughs> everybody welcome thank you and uh yes today newsletter is out thanks everybody and uh i must do must have to also say that this is the first uh post-pandemic live presentation of the newsletter so glad to be back in flesh and blood <laughs> and uh, since i know everybody asks the next deadline for anybody submitting will be for january 5th and uh, on a pop culture note, that's the day that Diane Keaton turns 76. <laughs> I always tie these things in. Now, I also must have to give enormous props to Linda Fisher. I have to give her five stars. Yes. A week or two ago, our printer said, oh, and by the way, we won't be open Friday and Monday. So Linda, she moved heaven and earth to get these things to me yesterday, Tuesday. So they opened on a Tuesday and Linda got them on a Tuesday and got them for me yesterday. So well done, Linda. Well, uh, Emma is not here tonight, but Bob, I would like to present you the non-presidential copy. And thanks, by the way, to Jeremy for calling out mentioning the committee members thanks now as for the end as for uh, giving them out it'll be myself and Ann mcdermott tonight and so uh of course we can't do it now with all due respect to anybody else speaking but it'll be at the end of the meeting we will have two signs in the back a through l m through z your last name alphabetically so please form orderly cues and we'll be happy to distribute them and of course as for the hierarchy of who gets them and who doesn't you can, you are entitled to them if you are a green or a blue, but not a red. So that's your incentive if you're a red to uh, come up through the ranks, become a full fledged member, and you'll be eligible for our newsletter guidelines. The McCarthy, you, <laughs> you, you, 
You're not going to give them the communists? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no reds, right. <laughs> That's Matt Baker doing the reds joke there for those at home. Uh, so uh, we'll be, uh, so just, uh, and also for the, the mailing list, it is obligatory on your side because not everybody wants them. It is not just simply part of the being a member of GANIC. So you must show your own initiative and the right to write the The newsletter, the email is newsletter at GANIC.org. You can see it on the website, on the newsletter itself. Questions? Okay. For the benefit of the audience at home, take care. That's, that's why I wanted Dave to stay there. He kept walking out of the camera range. I, I love getting the newsletter. And just a thought, be, as we are gaining traction with new members and having people renew their membership, maybe the next uh, edition that comes out could have a page that has each of the different committees and what they do, a quick little blurb, and asking people in the online version to sign up, put your name in if you're interested in joining that committee. And then also have photographs of each of the new members each month so that we can make sure that we're reaching out, saying hello, welcoming everybody in, and we just build that connection a little bit more closely. Thank you. Good idea. Well, would you like me to nominate you as the person to submit that to us? What do we have to do to the, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I can Michael Morgenthal. Um, we kind of have a working document at the board level that explains all of this, so we will share that with Dave uh, to include it in the next slide. Yeah. Michael Morgenthal built this working document. They'll share it with me. <laughs> Question: Somebody, anybody? So, thank you, Bob. Always a pleasure to see you and the newsletter. All right. Um, we're finished with committee reports. Is there anything else unfinished or new business? Excellent. So, yes, sir. I nominate, because uh, I know that the venue does have a time for us to leave, that yes. we adjourn the meeting. Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you all for coming.